Hello guys, how's it going? Alex Grampi one here, I hope you're well. Today we've got a video on the Scirocco 2 litre TDI, how to replace your glow plugs and why should you replace them. Right, being 2 litre TDI, this engine is in a lot of VAG group cars, so not only Scirocco, you got it in the Golf, and you got most of VWs, Audi, Skoda and Seat, so you might have exactly the same engine in there and it'll be the same procedure to do it. So the reason you replace the glow plugs, obviously serviceable item, usually 100k, but not everyone do it, and the reason for that is because although it's a simple job to do, but usually you've got an issue with the carbon buildup and everyone's a bit afraid of doing it because the carbon builds up on the ceramic tips on the glow plug, and when you start undoing it, it can snap, break, and stay in there or drop into the cylinder, and then you have to take the engine off and obviously take it apart to clean that out because if not, that will be a big issue inside your engine. So I'm doing them because Obviously the car has gone 100,000 miles, but I also got a fault code on the glow plugs. Now the light is not on, it doesn't always come on, but if you scan it, the fault will be there. So there is the three of them I think, they got the issue with the circuit, so I will be replacing all of them today. You do usually replace the whole kit, but I will be really careful not to damage one. And I'll use the correct tools and correct spray to make sure it will help me get them out of there easier. So just a quick one, the glow plugs, they do need replacing every 100k or when they go wrong and you should replace the whole kit. And just to let you know, obviously on the diesel cars it's different from petrol cars because on petrol cars you've got spark plugs. So diesel got glow plugs and they only work in the beginning on the startup because then you don't use them during the whole rest of the journey. So once the engine is warm, because it's a compression engine, it uses compression to obviously create that explosion inside the cylinder. Right, so the tools you're going to need for this job is the torque wrench. Uh, you're going to need that to do up the glow plugs once they're in there. 80 newton meters for that one. Uh, you're going to need the 3.8 extension ratchet and 10 mil dip socket to get the glow plugs out of there. Uh, you're also going to need a magnet. If you've got a smaller one, it will help to get the glow plugs out of there. Or in case you've got a rubber socket inside, that will get the glow plug in, out of there anyway. Uh, you're going to need some pliers to disconnect the fuel pipe. You're going to need a flat blade screwdriver that will help you get the fuel pipe off. Uh, you're going to need Torx 30 to get a couple of screws off that you're going to see in a bit. Uh, obviously, a uh, ratchet for that and the 10 mil as well. You can use the other one to undo one of the nuts that holds the fuel lines. And I definitely recommend having the air compressor or some type of air tool to get rid of all the rubbish that's going to be around the glow plug because you don't want any of that going in the cylinder once you remove the glow plug. Right, so the next step will be obviously to open the bonnet, have a look at the engine and find the glow plugs. And for that, that gives me a perfect opportunity to use my new LED light from Draper Expert Toolkit. This is awesome, guys. It's wirelessly rechargeable, really good tool. The battery life is amazing and it's really bright, as you can see. Definitely handy for situations like this. Check it out. That's brilliant, you got a super bright light on there. So the first thing to do is to remove the cover that we got here. This is usually held on the rubber bits that you got on the cover, so do one side at a time. Sometimes it can be a bit stiff to come off. You can use a bit of WD-40 afterwards on here. Thread the little bits that hold it in. Push them back in the proper place. Get the cover out of the way. Now this way you might look at this and think, oh my, 2 litre TDI engine doesn't look like this, so you might have a different year, but just to let you know guys, don't worry about it because you're still going to have glow plugs on it. My ones in this case, this engine is, I'm pretty sure this is the, yeah, CBD engine. So you got the glow plugs here, little plugs going into them, little connectors, so one, two, three, four. And like I mentioned earlier, I got an issue on one, three, uh, sorry, one, three and four. So on this engine, the Campbell is on this side and the count starts from this side. So if you've got number one, that's that one, number two, number three, number four, just to make it clear, because I know some cars are different, but on this engine, that's the way it goes. So the next step will be to unplug them, give it a wiggle, and it will come off. It's a long lead. Guys, just one important thing that I would like to mention is when you're doing this job, 
please make sure you disconnect the battery, at least the negative terminal on there. It's just the safest thing because you're going to be unplugging all the injectors and the glow plugs and also the fuel rail there. So please make sure you disconnect it, it's just a safety one. And also don't forget to torque up the glow plugs once they obviously in there, 18 newton meters for this engine. Right, this is just to give you the closer look. So this is the lead that I've unplugged from there, as you can see. So number one was in there, down there. That's number two, number three, and number four. So you have to wiggle them off to get them off. Right guys, this is really important. I do hope you're gonna listen to this. This is a three in one high performance penetrant spray. I definitely recommend using this around the glow plug to get them out. I know it doesn't guarantee you 100% that they will come out without breaking, but this definitely gives you a massive chance of getting them out of there. And trust me, I have done them before and it does help a lot. So I would definitely recommend using this. So spray all around the four glow plugs once you remove the plugs. Leave it on there, I usually leave it overnight if I got a chance. I'll leave it overnight, I'll run the car. So I'll leave it soaking there. Obviously don't go too mental, make sure there's enough around it. I'm gonna spray it, drive the car today, and then do the job tomorrow, spray a bit more when I'm doing it. So I got all the leads off, just spray it around there. Move them out of the way. Like I said, this will help you guys, so please do try and do this. So I've plugged them all back in, put the cover back on, and I'm gonna obviously use it today and come back and do the job tomorrow, and hopefully there's enough juice in there to make sure that we'll come out without any issues. Right, so I've driven it now for a day, well actually two days, and it's all looking good. The spray is still around there, so hopefully it did help. The other thing I would like to mention before we do this job is obviously once you unplug them, if you have got access to the airline and air trigger, it will be really handy if you can blow it in there, get rid of the rubbish that's around the glow plug because you don't want anything falling down into the cylinder once the glow plug is out. So make sure it's nice and tidy in there. If you've got airline, try and use like a screwdriver or something, a bit of paper and pick the stuff out of there. But yeah, you definitely need to be careful so you don't drop anything into the cylinder through that hole. Right, so this is just to show you what you have to take off in order to get to the glow plugs and it's all because of one glow plug which is number four unfortunately. The wire is not long enough to get the whole plug out of there. So what you have to do guys to start with is unplug this sensor which is the fuel uh, rail sensor that you got there. So to unplug it all you have to do is pull this tab back. It lifts a little locking mechanism that you can see there. You can see when you pull it back. So all you have to do is just slide it off. The same on four of your injectors, same plugs, just a little bit smaller. You can use a screwdriver if you want. So push it back and it will lift the tab there, as you can see. So one, two, three, four. Unplug all of them. The next step will be removing the 10 mil nut that you got on there, holding this fuel pipe. And you will also have to remove three Torx 30 uh, screws. So one of them is there holding this fuel pipe, the black one. Another one is there. And another one's there as well. So it also holds the sensor there, so that will have to go back on, as you can see. Same screw holds both of the things. Once you've done that, the next step will be disconnecting these two fuel pipes, and that will be it. So you're gonna need some pliers to squeeze that and push it off, and then screwdriver to obviously unplug that. And the same on this one, just no clip, you just have to push it off with a screwdriver, be careful not to split it. Once that is undone, uh, you will be able to lift the whole wiring loom up enough to get this plug out of there, guys. Don't force it because it will break it or snap the wires. Right, so got a bit of paper there. Squeeze it with the pliers, move it off. That one's off. There you go. That's it. Not a lot of fuel coming out, which is good. It's nice out of the way. You can lift it up. Which is much easier. There you go. And the last plug is out of the way. So now, as I mentioned earlier, now that this is out of the way, use the airline if you can to blow around the glow plugs. 
using my goggles, make sure you obviously wearing all the correct PPE. So that's all nice and clean around there. So before I start on doing them, now that it's nice and clean, I'm gonna spray a bit more on there. Like I said, hopefully this will help avoid any issues when they're coming off. Well, now it's time for the moment where you start sweating a little bit. So you need a deep 10 millimeter socket on there. So I'm using 3.8. So now it's the time to find out. Don't go crazy on it. Start undoing it slowly. There you go. They're usually not very tight. So just feel it. Don't go crazy. Just feel it. Start undoing it slowly. Hopefully it's not going to seize up. Because when you start seizing up, that means that's when there's a build up on the tip of a carbon. And yeah, there's a chance of snapping it once it does that. So we're going to carry on. Hopefully this one's coming out all right. There you go. Probably going to need a magnet to get it out of there. Let's see if that comes out. A bit of an angle. Lovely. And that's that one out. God, that is actually quite clean. There's no build up at all. Now that you got one out, I mean, obviously, when you bought the part, I hope you had a good parts guy that checked all the details of the car properly and got the right glow plugs at this stage. But obviously, once you took one out, just get a new one out of the box and make sure you have a look at them and make sure it's the right part, the right length, because you don't want it to be, to be too long. Make sure the thread is the same size as well. So yeah, that looks like the right glow plug. So I think we should be safe to go and do the other three now as well. Right, so I'm using the Bosch glow plugs and like I mentioned earlier, you need to make sure you check them that they're the correct glow plugs for your car and obviously check it against the old glow plug to make sure the size is the same and the thread is the same. Uh, so I usually like to apply a little bit of copper grease on the threads there just to make it easier for next time if it ever has to come off. Uh, it's not a lot, so it's not going to cause any issue with the contact point for the ground. Um, so yeah, just put a little bit on there and obviously it's time to get them back in there and talk them up. When you're getting them in there as well, don't just drop them in the hole. Use either a magnet or something similar to slowly lower them down so you don't damage the tip or anything. Or just use your fingers and drop it very slowly in there. There you go. So we can start them up by hand and torque them up in the end. Let's just tighten them up slightly. And now I'm gonna use my torque wrench that I've got here. It's already set up to 80 newton meters. So you'll get the click once it's done up. Perfect. Right, so now everything's done up. We've done it up to 80 newton meters, everything's sorted. All you have to do now, guys, is please be careful, obviously, uh, with the fuel lines that you disconnected. You have to plug it all back in and reinstall everything, obviously, in order and plug everything back on. And hopefully, you ain't gonna have any fault codes as long as everything's done properly. But anyway, I'm gonna be using the diagnostic tool to check if the fault codes are gone. And tomorrow morning, I will find out if the, obviously, car is starting properly. But I'm pretty sure it will, because obviously there was a fault with the glow plugs and now it's fixed. Right, so obviously when installing the wiring back on, make sure you plug in the glow plugs properly. Just need to get this one in, because that was the whole reason of taking all of this stuff off. So the first one's already in there. Don't necessarily need to plug it on straight away. So get the fuel pipes out of the way. And these three go on top. Just start locating them slowly while adjusting everything the fuel pipe locates in the wiring there there's a couple of clips holding it on there you go so now at this stage you can actually plug them on to the glow plug
it clips on. So you'll feel it going on. There you go, that's that one. That's that one. And that. So they're all connected now. We can do the fuel lines now. Jumbly, that's all good. So now we can plug in all the injectors. Make sure that's clipped on properly. And don't forget the fuel rail as well. It's clipped on. So this slides on top of it. Just double check it's all still plugged in. Lovely jubbly. It slides over that. It's all good. When you start the car up, don't forget to have a look at the here at this point so you got no fuel leaks everything is nice and tight on there it shouldn't leak but obviously have a look once the car is running and at this stage we're ready to put the 10 mil back on and all our torques as well Right guys, so here we are, the job is done. I've started the car up, cleaned the fault codes, nothing's coming back, so it's good results. Also, don't forget, obviously, once you're running the car, to check for any fuel leaks on the pipes that you disconnected. So I've checked my one, it's all good, and the car is starting really well now. So yeah, thumbs up for that one. And yeah, I think the job is done. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, and I will do a video apart to show you how to check the glow plugs uh, how to test them if they're any good once they're in the car obviously i know you've seen me using the obd scanner but there is a manual way that you can check the glow plug while it's in there without taking it out and also the other way of doing it once it's out as well so if you're interested do comment below like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching i'll see you soon bye